Hello everybody, this is Chris Mackey and this is your 18th tutorial on Honeybee Energy Simulation and it is the last one in which you're going to be covering uh, stuff related to constructions of you know roofs, walls and, and you know all those cool types of constructions and specifically we're going to get down deep now all the way to the level of materials. If you guys remember in the past few videos we, um, we sort of pulled constructions out of the library and, and assigned them to our zones. We made custom custom constructions for our windows here of double pane and single pane windows and now we're going to get all the way down to the level of, of actually if, we, if you ever wanted to make your own materials. That, that's what we're covering in this video. And I'll give a disclaimer at the start, like none of this, none of the stuff we're doing in this video is really going to change any of the zones that we've, we've made here. And if you don't see yourself ever making your own materials, then, uh, then feel free to pass this video by. But I just, I wanted to make sure you guys knew that there's a, a, there's a workflow for, for, um, for creating your own materials up from the individual properties of those materials. So, all right, so let's, let's dive right in here. And, and so, all right, so you guys will see if you look under the construction tab, that there are there are a few components here like there's no mass opaque material window material uh, energy plus opaque material and window air gap there are things that allow you to essentially to make your own materials up from properties and I'm just I'm gonna drag and drop all of these onto the canvas right now all right so bring the no mass opaque material um, and you know and we'll bring let me let me just bring them all together so you guys can see here and compare we'll bring the window material onto the canvas. We will bring the, uh, let's see, uh, energy plus opaque material. And, uh, and you can see that's pretty large. And then we got a, an energy plus window air gap. Okay. All right, so these are the key ones. And I mean, you also notice that there's a, there's a blinds material in there, but don't, don't worry about that one. That one's only used in specific. I mean, we'll, we'll do another series on shading uh, where I'll, I'll cover exactly how that one works right there. But these are the probably, these, between these, are going to cover most of what, you know, what you need, you'd imagine creating for any, your own materials. And you can see that the inputs to all of these components are all, uh, all properties that they're asking for. Things like roughness and R value and thermal absorption and all these things. Um, and uh, and a name essentially. So I mean, and and you'll you know I mean. So you see at its basic level, energy plus materials are nothing more than collections of properties. And you know these are properties that are then fed into the simulation to you know look at heat flow across them or heat storage if there's you know if there's thermal mass and. Um, so I mean, so that's really, that's all that these materials are. And I mean, there are different types. There's, so I mean, so you see the energy plus no mass opaque material is like, is a simplified opaque material. There's, I mean, obviously true to its name, there's no mass. And the only thing that's really like import, primarily important about this one is the R value that you'll input there. Uh, and so this is, this is, I mean, a convention. Sometimes, like, sometimes you won't know the actual mass of your construction, but you know that it's relatively light and you know that the R value is such and such. Um, you know, so you can you can easily create your own material from that R value. Let's say, I mean, and by the way, these are all SI R values that you input here. I know we, we had an option to view IP R values before, but let's say, I don't know, like, yeah, you have like an R value of five and, you know, and you'll have to plug that into into uh, here and you'll, you'll have to, I mean, I'm clearly you also have to set a name up for your uh, for your, your component too. So I don't know, maybe we make this, I don't know, maybe this is a structural insulated panel or something, the SIP. If you guys know those things, but you know you'd have to you'd have to put in values for each and every one of these in order to to make your own material. Um, because if I'm pretty sure right now, oh no, actually okay, so there are defaults that it will put in there. Um, you know, for thermal resistance and stuff. Well, all right. Well, my thermal resistance is 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 five or something. But you can you know imagine using this pretty quickly to make like a lo uh, no low mass like a. Uh, uh, you know, type of material. I guess rough, maybe that's not exactly what it, well, maybe that is what a SIP is. I don't know. But yeah, but these, you know, these are typical thermal absorptance values that you get for that. Um, and so, yeah, and so you can use this to make something like that. You can, I mean, the same thing goes for the, like the window. You can assign, a, this is a window with like, with relative, well, uh, I mean, I, I guess that could act as either a single pane or, you know, actually maybe I'll pull the air gap up here. Or you can, you know, put an air gap in between two panes. But basically you define a window with a U value, which is, you know, basically the inverse. The, you know, it's one over the R value. Um, so I mean, so I don't know, maybe a typical window R value, or U value might be one or something. Um, so, you know, you can imagine making a, a window pretty, pretty quickly like that. I mean, I don't know, one that's probably... Probably that's actually that's a lot of heat flow. So maybe it's like a single pane or something. 
uh, of glass. I, I'm gonna <laughs> write out the whole thing because uh, uh, we used single pane before in, in some of the other things. But then you, you know, then you'll specify a solar heat gain coefficient, which is you know the amount of, of radiation that passes through your glass, including both visible and uh, and infrared radiation. So I don't know, maybe something like this, like this with the U value of that. I, uh, I'm I'm kind of guessing at the wind gear, but. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you can imagine maybe it has uh, 0.8 or something, you know, as, as a solar heat gain coefficient. Uh, and then you have visible transmittance, which is probably, I mean, if it's a single pane of glass, it's pretty close to that too. But you can imagine, yeah, so you can make window materials that way. Um, you can make, uh, 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 you know, uh, air gaps that way with a, with a sort of gas type. I mean, I think really, I mean, I don't know, probably all that, you'll mostly, I think, be interested in, in using air gaps, I think, which is something that's already in the libraries I've showed you in the past videos. But, you know, but you can, you know, pull a gas type from here and, and a thickness and, and sort of define a, a custom uh, air gap or not air gap. Maybe it's a argon or I don't know, some of the other things that they put in windows these days. Um, and uh, and so yeah and by the way and yeah and if there's like a low E coating on your glass that's something that will factor into your solar heat gain coefficient and U values and such. Um, so so that's that's that there and then there's also then if you want to like go hardcore and like not even like the the no mat the no mass material you can make a full full energy plus material with with roughness and thickness and conductivity and and you know and density and and on and you know and all the properties that that are kind of associated so let's say i mean and and uh, you know maybe a good way like maybe what maybe right now we'll make something like suppose we have like a super massive wall like maybe i don't know like maybe we have some like adobe structure that we're building out in the desert i know yeah we're, we're pretty far from my parents house right now <laughs> but i mean for the for the purposes of uh, of this video let's uh, all right let's make a material for like for a thick adobe walls because well actually i don't know i could imagine living in an adobe house at some point in my life i, I think i think adobe is pretty cool a a d o b e adobe and we'll make that the name and let's see all right and let's see what we i mean what we get out of here for the start so i think it might well all right so it doesn't assign anything else because it's we need a thickness we need a conductivity and we need a density oh yeah we need a lot of things to be able to do this so all right so normally to be able to do this we should you know i would should recommend looking maybe to sometimes to other other materials that are in the library so all right, if I if I I'm gonna copy and paste this stuff up here. So let's find something similar to Adobe that's in the library right now. Um, but I, I mean, I, and I know Adobe is not in the library, which is why I'm making it right now. Um, but uh, but there is a concrete, and if I do a keyword search for that, uh, nope, there's no window material. But if I look in the EP materials, you can see that there are a few things there for uh, for concrete. Uh, and let's see, and now we can deconstruct, maybe we'll deconstruct this 8 inch uh, heavyweight concrete and see what the properties are for that. We'll use that to guide our, you know, creation of an Adobe material here. So I'm going to grab an item selector and hook up the, you know, this list of these things here. And you see that, all, you know, you can select out any one of these, but I, I just wanted the first one, the first um, 8 inch heavyweight concrete. Uh, there and all right and now I mean you guys remember I showed you in a few videos back that you can de decompose this construction those are this material rather so I'm gonna decompose that material and you'll see that once we decompose it and you look at the values and the and the comments okay so and I'll, I'll just put these next to each other right here so we can see so so you guys can see actually that the materials here, when we decompose that, that material, are the same, very similar to the, the material properties that you see here. So we can just borrow, I think, some of these. I mean, because, you know, some of these are probably the same between Adobe and concrete. I mean, well, thickness, all right, thickness is something that we want to change, though, because we, we, I remember we said, we, you know, we have really thick walls. Maybe, maybe we'll make, like, this is, like, I don't know. I know they have, like, some cool buildings out in, like, uh, in, I think, in Lebanon somewhere or something, where they have, like, meter-thick adobe walls. And they, they'll build, actually, very tall buildings this way. Um, and, it's, and it's awesome. You get these really awesome thermal mass properties. And you need to probably do something like this if you want to, to use this and, in, in, you know, use anything similar in an energy simulation. All right, so we're making a meter thick Adobe wall here. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll borrow the same. I mean, conductivity is probably pretty close to that of concrete. So we'll take 1.7 as our, as our conductivity. 
So 1.7 there, and that, that would be in, you know, it's telling you the units in the comments in watts per meter squared per degree Kelvin. The density is probably pretty similar, so let's see, 2,242 kilograms per meter squared. Uh, maybe we'll just do, I don't know, we're doing a rough approximation here, so maybe we'll just do 2,200 for our density, and what's our specific heat? 8,800, 8, maybe we'll say 840 for a specific heat. I mean, you can, you know, obviously as you get further along in a project, you, you know, you can use actual values that you end up finding from a manufacturer or, or from tests that you do from, you know, from actual soil, you know, of the adobe on site. Um, but you can see, all right, so we put in the basic levels of what we need here. Uh, in for, to, for our adobe material and it auto assigned a thermal absorption, solar absorption and you know visual absorption and you know maybe those yeah actually maybe those I could imagine those being a little bit um, different because I mean because adobe is pretty bright it reflects the heat pretty well so you know maybe I'll just change the solar and visible absorption that maybe to uh, maybe point, point, uh, 0 0.6 I think is actually, you know, a bit, well, I guess I'm really not changing it too much. But you guys see that you can change that. And now we've created a material, an, an adobe material. And now if we want to use this in any of our constructions, all that will, well, I mean, we could take it and actually and you can plug it straight into, like, I mean, if we want to make an adobe, well, all right, actually, I'll just show you guys this so that you, you understand the workflow. We can make a construction of adobe wall. Uh, and you know, and, you know, with with just the single material that we've made there, and so our layer one is going to be this, and then I mean, just as we did in the previous videos, you know, you see we will use this thing, this uh, in order to write it into the project library, this different, uh, you know, that that can just take this EP construction, and you know, we set the boolean to true, and it, and it writes it into our library, and so now, now any of the other constructions, now you know, we have this Adobe wall. Any of the other constructions, if we want to like, if we want to change all the walls of my family's house over to Adobe, we could do that now because we because we've made a material for that. All right, so I know this was a departure from both uh, from both my parents' house and from uh, reality, maybe because you know, there's no way that my parents would retrofit to to put in Adobe walls. But I mean, but this is just to show you guys the materials that you can make and the process for doing that and how they how they work into your workflow. Um, all right, guys, that, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And in the next one, we're going we're gonna to depart from constructions to start to talk about loads and schedules. So thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon.